All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about young fig trees and just getting their life set up for the future. And how to do that in really some of the best ways I know how. Uh, we talk in the past in different videos about every little subject that we're mentioning here. But some of the things that we often talk about with the younger fig trees is fertilizer, water, sunlight, and we talk about actually staking the branches. We've also talked about pruning, and not just pruning in terms of shaping the trees, but also rejuvenation pruning. Um, so these are some of the most important things. I think if you can get all those things down and really understand that as a grower, uh, you probably will have a really good green thumb by the end of it, and you can grow any of these younger fig trees into something that is really well worth your time. So for me at least, one of the things that I've did recently is I came in here the other day and I staked a lot of the new branches. So these new branches that come out are the fruiting branches. If the trees are young, they're not gonna produce really high quality fruit. But if I can give the trees enough light, I would still love them to fruit at a younger age. Getting them enough light will actually set the fruit buds along the branch. So that's really critical. If you wanted your fig tree to fruit, at a younger age, and I personally would love to see that because I continually like to evaluate my fig trees, even in year one, even from a cutting, there's a lot you can still tell. People always say that uh, you can't really tell a whole lot in the first three years of its life, but that's nonsense. Um, let me see the, the shape of the fruits. Let me see the shape of the fruits in person. Let me see how the fruits actually hang on the tree um, and let me see the split resistance from that shape and that hanging. Let me see the hang time. Let me see how long actually the fruit needs to ripen on the tree before I pick it. You know, there's a number of different things. Let me see how thick the skin is or how tough the skin is. There's a lot we can draw from our figs in a very, very short amount of time uh, of firsthand experience. So for me, I think I love to see these trees fruit and beyond just getting them to fruit, staking them and positioning them so that they can get enough light or the most light as possible is also going to help them grow to the right size as quickly as possible. Because more light is more photosynthesis, right? More photosynthesis is more carbohydrates. So that helps these trees grow. So the light factor is so underrated. I think it's so, so important and we have to touch on that every single year. Uh, if I have two shoots from the base, I separate the shoots from the base. If I have one trunk from the base and it's a tree form, well then I usually typically stake that tree form. So I usually have one stake no matter what for each individual fig tree that I'm growing. But if there are multiple stakes, multiple branches, I should say, multiple trunks, I stake them away and form that V pattern that we look for. That opens up the canopy to maximize the sunlight potential in the future. Because we're setting up the scaffolds now, yes, if we have a tree form, the main trunk is not the scaffold, but the branches actually, the multiple trunks from the base are the scaffolds of the tree uh, in the future. So we need to be really careful about that. And, and if for some reason we have a tree form and it starts branching out, that's awesome. And at that point, we need to make sure that the branches in this particular situation are growing away from each other. I'll zoom in here for you guys so you can see, rather than just looking at my pretty face. Um, you can see, here we go, here's an example. The tree comes up from the base and branches out this way and this way, and then of course this way. Now we have one extra fruiting branch in there that's completely unnecessary. However, the more fruiting branches and the more photosynthesis we can achieve with these trees, I think the better early on. So I'm gonna let the trees go a little bit crazy. At some point here in the summer, when it becomes a little bit late in our season, I'm actually gonna pinch our fig, my fig trees. These younger trees here will get the fruit set that we want, maybe if they're not already fruiting. We'll also pinch off some of the branches that we don't necessarily want them to grow anymore. At that point, I'd rather maybe focus my attention. In that case, we looked at on the three branches that are gonna be the permanent scaffolds. I'd rather see them grow more 
and less energy directed to that small branch that really isn't going to do much for me in terms of the form long term. I won't remove it, I'll just pinch off the top. And then later in the season, when the trees are dormant, I'll snip it right off. Now, in terms of pinching, we're also going to be on these single stem trees. Like this here is a Malta Black. Actually, this is not a Malta Black. This is a Sementina Rosso. And it only has just one single stem, one single shoot. It's a single stem whip. So at a certain height and a certain point of the season, I already see pretty much the new fruit buds popping up out here on the, on the branch. So I'm not necessarily pinching actually to encourage it to fruit. I will be pinching it at some point in the summer to encourage it to branch out because I'd rather get it to a certain height and then branch it out. Now, other people have different preferences and they'd rather wait till the next season to do the pruning, but I see no reason to do that because if I were to do the pinching now, get this to then branch out, it's then going to form new branches and those new branches will have apical buds and the apical buds next year will actually have an earlier fruit set and an easier time fruiting. And that's when the fruit really matters at that point in the second and third years. So for me, I'd rather pinch now, form the, the, ap the apical buds. That way I don't have to do any pruning. I'm, I feel like I'm wasting some time. Some people argue that after you do pinching, the branching that comes out of the new growth here is just not very good. Well, I would totally disagree. And for those people, you need to have more food and more water on your trees after we do the pinching. So the, the water, by the way, is going to continue. The water is what's really going to encourage our trees to grow the most. That's the on or off switch of the growth. So if I stop the water, the trees will all stop growing and they'll lignify. If I continue the water, even after pinching, it's going to start branching out. We're going to see good success. So those are the main things at that point. And then of course, in the fall, when everything starts to go dormant, we'll do our pruning and also our rejuvenation pruning. So that the following season, when these trees wake up, they're potentially the healthiest they can be. We're getting rid of the fig mosaic virus or at least as much of it as humanly possible. So that's one, um, that's one situation there. Okay, the watering, as I, we mentioned that, and the last thing here I wanna to touch on is the food because I gave them all food this year and it's pretty basic. I just give them Osmocote, Classicote, Florican, whatever it is, these little beads down here, it doesn't matter what you call them, what brand you get. I just apply them as soon as the fig trees wake up. They last for a number of months. They give them a slow release of nutrients and that typically gives them all the nutrients that they need. However, this year, after really learning more about soil, I'm really valuing the microbes in the soil. And those are the things that I want to multiply and increase in my container fig trees and also in my um, in-ground fig tree plantings. Because that, those microbes and the diversity of microbes is what creates the best soil. So if I can inoculate really good microbes into the soil, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get myself, I think, a compost bubbler and I'm going to make my own compost juice, um, my own little liquid there. And basically I'm going to take some of my best soil in the yard, put it in the, the compost liquid. Um, why can't I think of the name? And then I'm gonna take some comfrey and other various plants I have around the yard that are meant for biomass and are high in nutrients. And I'm gonna throw them in there. And that's gonna bubble and that's gonna create the air that we need to multiply these microbes. So I'm gonna give these trees, which probably don't have nowhere near the same level of microbes in their containers, that the planting behind you has. This over here has been many years now of putting down different types of mulch. The microbes have multiplied and the trees have become very, very healthy and established in a much shorter time than if I had just grass underneath and never amended or never added anything to the soil. So for me, that's my main mission here this year with these younger trees, give them a shot of compost tea. That's what it is, excuse me guys. <laughs> We're gonna make our own compost tea, give them the microbes that they need. And I think we're gonna see fantastic results going forward. I thank everybody here for watching this one. This was a really important talk that maybe is a little bit old at this point, but I really do appreciate you guys listening to this. Please hit that subscribe button, 
Check out our blog, figboss.com, and check out our fig tree sales on Figbit. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.